I am extremely nervous right now, and I shouldn't be. Tomorrow afternoon, my Pelicans face off against the self-proclaimed king, one of the many deities in the mainstream media, LeBron James. My Pelicans face off against LeBron James and the Lakers in the last game of the regular season. Game will be broadcast nationally on ESPN. And my inside sources, they are telling me that the fragile Anthony Davis is going to be available tomorrow afternoon for the game. I guess he has gotten over the hemorrhoid that kept him out of the game Thursday night against the Rainbow Warriors. This is going to be a huge game for my Pelicans, arguably the biggest game of the regular season. All eyes will be on New Orleans. Members of the national media will be there. And speaking of members, if you feel so inclined, become a member of the channel. I have two tiers of membership that I'm offering you guys. You can become a parishioner for $5 a month, or you can be like me and be a covert deacon of Woke United Methodist for $10 a month. You can come along with me as we covertly attend Sunday morning services at Woke United Methodist to thwart all their plans before they can implement them into action. But all kidding aside, I'm also starting a Discord server for channel members where we can communicate with each other 24-7. You'll get 10% off all my merchandise, which should be launched here in the next couple of weeks. Membership obviously is optional, but the content will always be free. If you do decide to sign up, I greatly appreciate it. But anyway... Biggest game of the regular season tomorrow afternoon for my New Orleans Pelicans. Now, I am beyond proud of this team last week after their 5-1 and one, or 1-5 one and five homestand, I should say, and that embarrassing loss to a team in the G League disguising themselves as the San Antonio Spurs, led by one of the lead pastors at Woke United Methodist, Greg Popovich. This time last week, I was damn close to writing my Pelicans off, but to their credit... They have completely turned things around. They saved the season. This team is growing before my very eyes. Zion Williamson has emerged as one of the biggest superstars in the NBA. If the Pels beat the Lakers tomorrow, they clinch a spot in the playoffs. I cannot tell you how excited I am about the postseason in New Orleans. The city will be electric. The atmosphere in the Smoothie King Center will be unbelievable. But... Underneath my feelings of excitement, underneath my immense confidence in this team to clinch a spot in the playoffs, underneath all of these positive vibes are feelings of dread. As soon as the NBA announced the other day that they were moving this game to ESPN, I immediately became nervous. A smart NBA commissioner... They would seize this opportunity. A smart NBA commissioner would see this as a chance to build a new superstar in Zion Williamson. This Pelicans team, it is very likable. They are easy to market to the general public. They're fun to watch. The team is full of personalities. If Zion Williamson remains healthy, the Pelicans... They have the potential to carry the NBA for the next decade. Unfortunately, though... The commissioner in the NBA is a man named Alice, and Alice Silver has this weird obsession of wanting to see LeBron James, his king, in the postseason. It doesn't matter that the Lakers aren't real contenders. doesn't matter that you have the potential to build new young stars. I have this overwhelming fear tomorrow that Alice Silver is going to instruct NBA officials to do everything in their power to make sure that LeBron James and the Lakers win this game to better their chances in the play-in tournament. Well, KC, that is absolutely ridiculous. Are you saying that the NBA plays favorites? Are you saying that NBA officials are determining the outcome of games? Well, the answer to that first question is an obvious yes. Now, I don't have any evidence to support my theory when answering question two, but I am not the only one that is wondering if NBA officials are fixing games. Matter of fact, earlier this week on his podcast, Shaq, he didn't accuse NBA officials of betting on games. Shaq came right out and said that he has been told NBA officials are betting on games, at least in the past they were. Shaq, 
He hosts a podcast called The Big Podcast. Now, obviously, the show isn't big on creativity because the title absolutely sucks. <laughs> ah, just kidding, Shaq. Please do not kick my ass. But earlier this week, he and his co-host, Adam Lefkoe, Adam Leflo, who cares? It doesn't matter what his name is. Earlier this week, Shaq and the dude from the Bible who allowed Eve to convince him to eat the apple. What do they call it back then? The forbidden fruit? Today, the forbidden fruit is Don's lemons. But back then, I think it was an apple. But either way, the dude responsible for the fall of man, he is speaking with Shaq about gambling allegations in the NBA. Shaq, he is recounting this story that happened during his playing career. He's at a bar and he takes a seat next to someone he doesn't know. As it turns out, this dude sitting next to Shaq in the bar he is one of the biggest bookies in America. Now, most street bookies, they have a bad reputation. They are known for breaking legs. They are known for charging massive interest when their clients get behind on payments. The feds, they used to call that loan sharking. Today, it's called banking. It's become common for banks to charge 30, 35, maybe 40% interest on credit cards. At least when the mafia was charging high interest, they were offering you protection. If I get caught in a potentially violent situation, the last person I want standing next to me is some doofus nerdy banker. But this particular bookie, He was actually looking out for Shaq. He told him, you might not want to sit next to me. I am a well-known bookie. People know me. He didn't want Shaq being accused of betting on NBA games. So Shaq, he asked the bookie if other NBA players were betting, gambling. Now the bookie, he didn't have players as clients, but he did have someone else. Watch for yourself. Biggest bookies in the world and people know me and I don't want you next. That's so cool, but... You ain't got to worry about me. So we started talking. And we said, hey, you you get players? He said, no, nah, you guys make too much money. I get referees. I have talked with coaches that have told me that they thought a ref was refing a game weird. And then they went after the game and looked at the spread and realized, like, oh, wow. Like, a few of those loose ball fouls the ones where it's like you and another guy running and you both collide at the same time and who they call the foul on i used that to, kind of stuff whenever i felt like the game wouldn't be in colorado i always used to go to the ref and be like the spread is six <laughs> all the time the spread is six did you was that the actual spread or did you just make no, it I, no i just just always tell them like i know exactly what you're doing the spread is six and then i always used to tell them i said don't matter man i'm making 40 million this year do it you gotta do it again like if you want the people that pay to watch you say it don't really matter to me. Doesn't like, that like make the, you sad? Did it, it make does. you annoyed as a player? It does. Since this story happened several years before the Tim Donaghy scandal, I'm assuming this probably happened when Shaq was playing in Los Angeles, maybe Miami. So he probably encountered this bookie at some point during the early to mid-2000s. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, Casey, that was 20 years ago. There's just no way this is happening in the NBA today. Oh, really? Have you watched the NBA this season? Because I have. I have easily watched over, I don't know, over 100 games this season. The Pelicans have played in 81 games, watched all of them. I can't tell you how many times I have seen a questionable call or no call from NBA officials that just so happened to coincide with the point spread or it just so happened to coincide with the over-under. When John Morant returned from his suspension, he played the Pelicans twice in the span of about a week. I remember, late in the fourth quarter, the game was close. A play was challenged where they were determining if a foul was called on a shot or maybe it was a rebound. Herb Jones, he clearly has possession of the ball when the play ends. The challenge ends up being unsuccessful, but instead of the Pelicans having possession of the ball, NBA officials they decide to make up rules on the spot and they call for a jump ball. Long story short, Memphis ends up winning the game. Last month, Rudy Gobert accused NBA officials of betting on the outcome of games. For years, fans have been complaining about the incompetent officiating in this league. Some call it incompetence. Some call it negligence. 
other fans call it intentional. Now you got to remember, it's already been proven in the past that NBA officials bet on these games. How many times this season have we seen NBA head coaches publicly complain about the officiating? Allow KC to jog your memory. This is a compilation of NBA head coaches just from the last few months calling out the officiating in this league. Watch for yourself. What happened tonight, this is completely BS. This is shame. Shame for the referees, shame for the league to allow this. 23 free throws for them, and we get two free throws in in the fourth quarter. I all, I understand uh, respect for all stars and all of that, but we have star players on our team as well. They had to win tonight. If that's if that's the case, just let us know so we don't show up for the game. One of the most poorly officiated games I've ever seen. Record it. I'm fine with it. Fucking atrocious. Jaron Jackson plays 23 minutes and is in the paint all night. He's one of the most professional players in this league. And he gets a double technical foul. And the, the excuse I get is that he's charging at an official. It's called de-escalation. 29 free throws to 13. And I'm not that coach. You can go back in the history. I've done this one other time. Our team is competing their asses off. Competing their asses off. And this is what happens. The interactions right now with the officials, complete disrespect. I have a problem with the way we're, we are um, legislating defense out of the game. That's what we're doing in the NBA. The way we're teaching the officials, we're just enabling players to BS their way to the foul line. Can this really be coincidental? Is it really coincidental that all these head coaches, that current and former players, are either insinuating or outright discussing the possibility that NBA officials are determining the outcome of games? And what is Adam Silver doing about it? <laughs> He puts sponsorship logos on the jerseys of NBA officials to make them a bigger part of the game. Why would any business agree to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to put their company logo on the jerseys of NBA officials if the officials weren't going to be prominently featured throughout the game? Why would they do that? The thing is, the NBA is set up for success. All they have to do is get the hell out of their own way. And it wouldn't hurt if Adam Silver found a better broadcast partner for the NBA. Because ESPN's coverage of the NBA, it sucks. And TNT isn't much better. The coverage on TNT is a hell of a lot more entertaining than the coverage on ESPN. But... Neither network is teaching casual fans about the NBA. Charles Barkley's entertaining, but he doesn't know shit about fuck about the modern NBA. The other night, I'm watching Inside the NBA. Charles Barkley, he's claiming that the Pelicans don't play defense. A top five defense in the NBA. A team that is known for their defensive prowess. And one of the lead analysts on TNT is complaining that they don't play defense? Right now, you have a bunch of people in the national media covering the NBA who clearly are not watching the league. Remember earlier this week when Stephen A. Smith was praising Quentin Grimes, claiming that he was playing well for the New York Knicks? Quentin Grimes hasn't played a game in the NBA in over a month, and he plays for the Detroit Pistons. There is so much young talent spread evenly throughout the league right now. The past month of the regular season, it has been absolutely amazing. The race in the Western Conference is coming down to the final game of the regular season. We have been getting playoff basketball for the last four maybe even the last six weeks, probably since the All-Star break. And for some reason, casual fans are not watching. This league can't seem to get out of their own way. And you throw in accusations of gambling, you throw in theories that NBA officials are fixing games. Why would people watch? If I wanted to watch orchestrated athletics, I would watch the WWE. But give me your thoughts on this. Shaq becomes the latest person associated with the NBA to reveal that NBA officials could be betting on games. What do you think about this? 
do you think this is actually happening? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.